Welcome back everybody, my name is Robert and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about Tile Dentity. I've shown you this game before in my art program tutorial for GB Studio, uh, but this time I've, I've updated it since the jam that I made it for. I've also updated it based on some feedback given to me from Slime Hunter over on Twitter. He was kind enough to give his time to go through, play the game, the arcade mode as much as he could, and give me some pointers as to what wasn't obvious that should have been obvious, and to generally improve the experience that he had, which I am ever grateful for. Slime Hunter actually helped me in the past get my couple of games onto Steam. He uh, put Chaos Lab and Office Combat into this the Mangotronics Employment Collection, where it's with some other games that are really cool. Um, they're all to do with employment, so just like Chaos Lab, you work in a lab. Office Combat, you work in an office. Uh, all these other um, games are to do with working as well. So I'm ever grateful for his time and effort that he put into that, because as a developer you really need that outside perspective to see what you're missing. And for example, I used his advice on the arcade mode here to change this screen and update it so it's way more legible. I've taken away the 3 by 4 size canvas because it's arguably too small, not really necessary. I've also put in the time now, uh, but yeah, his feedback is invaluable and it's people like him that uh, really make our job as game developers easier. If having somebody you can rely on to give you feedback that normal players may not realize that they're experiencing. Most normal players might put up with quite a lot that they don't realize before they give up. And then if they give up, then they're not going to tell you why they gave up. But by having a trusted developer that you can, you can go to and kind of give you advice on what does and doesn't work, it's really useful. Uh, so I thank him to the moon and back. So if we start the game, I've also made it so when you begin, it, just like in the jam version, it gives you some, you know, heads up display of how to play. But the thing I actually wanted to talk to you a day, today about was my experience with Tile Identity and the kind of like the problems, again, of making large games on your own. If we look on the main menu here, we have our puzzle mode, arcade mode, and free paint mode. Um, I've made the free paint mode and you can, it saves what you did when you come back for when you come back into it. So you can be a bit creative with this. My idea for this was to connect it to the Game Boy printer so that if I was to put this on cartridge, uh, players with a Game Boy printer and a link cable on their hardware can link it up and print what they've drawn, which I absolutely love the idea of. And I still want to do that. And I did try it, but I feel as though there is more coding or scripting that I I'm not privy to that I need to learn. Obviously we'll make a tutorial video about once I do figure it out. And uh, puzzle mode. Puzzle mode says coming soon. And uh, it's because I want to make this into a full game that I can sell. Um, but I foresee this part of the game, this puzzle mode, taking much, much longer than I can really afford to spend. I need to fully design how the puzzle mode works I want it to be like a level system where, like we had in arcade mode, we have the difficulty of Officer, Detective, Chief, and Sherlock, where in each one we get access to to more painting tools. And so the idea is for puzzle mode is to have those four difficulties being four levels of puzzles that you go through, and the puzzles will just be remaking those images as quickly as you can. So for each amount of time it takes you, you'll get a certain star value, and then you use those stars to unlock the next, I guess, group of puzzles. Uh, it's a very basic design, and my fear for it is that it won't be that interesting, and the paintings that you use, that you do, uh, won't be that dissimilar to each other. So my fear is that I'll spend all this time, and the game won't be as interesting or as fun as I hope it will be. And I feel as though this is a fear that a lot of us developers have. And uh, it's, a right, it's a rightful fear. Like, we should be having this fear. We, as a, as a developer, you have to think about your audience, about your players, and about how they interact with your game. And if you blindly go into things, ex just, fi just hoping or believing that everybody is going to love this idea, this game, then you are most likely going to waste time um, unless you've done the testing, the prototyping, the research um, around your idea and can, and can justify doing it. 
And right now, I don't know how I can justify doing it. And that's the problem I seem to be having with almost all of my game ideas. With this game specifically, I, there's not really a, a message that I can put into this game or a personality that reflects me. With my other games like Take It Racing or The Rosebed and the Bicycle, there are things in those games that, that are a piece of me, like, um, like the idea of village design and talking to people. I can put dialogue in those in the rosebed and the bicycle for example that reflect ideas that i have in real life and with ticket racing 2 i can put in cars that i really love and i want to draw it becomes something i want to do but with this game i i did it for a jam and it is an idea that i had uh, previously in the year however it's not particularly that creative when it comes to adding ideas that reflect me. So unless I can do that and I can add ideas that do reflect me, I feel as though I may be putting this game on hold for an indefinite amount of time. So what does this mean for you as a developer as well? Well, what I'm trying to say is that you as a developer should be thinking about your choices in making games and thinking about how the time and effort you're putting in will be rewarded but also thinking more creatively about how you can exercise your creative muscles and your own personality in your creations. And just like at the beginning, I was talking about having uh, Slime Hunter have his input on, on this game and about how it could be, he was basically pointing out bugs. I feel as though what I want and what I need from this game is somebody who has a vision uh, or an idea that could elevate this and bring it to the next level that does allow me to have those creative influences that I want in the game. For example, I love the 70s, the idea of the, you know, the American West, uh, you know, 1970s car chases, even film noir as well. Um, this is obviously heavily inspired by film noir, but the gameplay doesn't really allow for that. It All it is is painting on a canvas. So if I could adjust the gameplay to fit the setting that I want better, this game would be more enjoyable for me to make. I, I'll let you in on something that I, I love to do, which is I love watching Tim Kane, Timothy Kane on uh, YouTube. He's one of the original creators of Fallout. As a designer and programmer who is more centered around RPG games, he talks about developing games and coming up with games from the very inception of the idea until release and he talks about putting setting first setting story systems and with this game i definitely put the systems first and then i made it so the story was you're translating the image in the head of the witness here that person the outline of a of a person has an image the thought bubble and you're copying that onto your canvas that's the story and then the setting is kind of a film noir, black and white um, setting. And as you can see, the effort was put into the mechanics, was put into the, the framing of this canvas, and then it was kind of put into the story to make the canvas idea fit, and then the film noir came from the one bit jam. So uh, I did it backwards, and now I feel as though I'm paying the price. I'm not able to redesign this game without completely ripping it up. And which might be okay, because as you know from the menu, the puzzle mode could be anything. The arcade mode is just this bit. So what I wanna do with you now is to think about how we might turn a simple game like this into a more fully fledged, you know, design that may require more effort, but would allow us to be more creative and also would mean that more people might be interested in buying it. And uh, we're going to discuss things to make this puzzle mode more interesting than the arcade mode, both to make and to play. The arcade mode can be seen as a repetitive, replayable thing that gives you a high score that you can pick up and play very quickly and put down and not worry. While the puzzle mode will be something more that you follow some kind of story or a pseudo story where there is a story laid out, but you don't have to remember the beats because just like the arcade mode you can replay it and get a better score but you don't have to 
the idea is to just move forward through this puzzles. And that was the original inception of this puzzle mode, and you can see how it drastically differs from arcade and free paint. So currently, puzzle mode would just be arcade mode with the timer inverted. Currently, in arcade mode, the timer ticks down, and when you get to the end, it gives you a high score. But in puzzle mode, it would be the opposite way around. The timer counts up to infinity, and uh, you get a score based on how quickly you did it. And it would be that simple. And it could even be in uh, scored in stars. So if you did it in one minute, you get one star. You did it in 45 seconds, you get two star. You did it under 30 seconds, you get three stars. And then the more stars you get, the quicker you unlock the next set of puzzles. But the, the issue with this is that it's not that dissimilar to arcade mode. It is literally the same gameplay repackaged. And that's my issue with why I might not want to continue with the idea. It kind of uh, is, it feels a bit lazy. It's not that, it doesn't add anything that's interesting. So what I'd be thinking about, well, let's go back to the setting, right? If it's film noir, if it's maybe set in the 70s, what did they do then that was interesting that maybe we don't do now? The things that would uh, come to mind would maybe be fingerprinting, It'd be maybe having Polaroid images, as you can see in this um, start screen. You would have to do some research, some actual research, look up what they did back then. But you can imagine that they didn't use anything digital, so there's no computers. So filing things away would have been difficult um, and remembering things like that and tying cases together. Um, if there was some kind of actual desk where the player had a filing cabinet, which was the levels, the puzzles, right? Maybe there are different kinds of gameplay, right? Maybe you can have a suspect lineup and you, you use what the witness has seen and you have to pick the correct witness. Maybe even a kind of gameplay where you have to match the fingerprints. And already we're, we're keeping the gameplay quite similar. We're, we're asking the player to copy something or really we're twisting it a bit and we're asking them to see the same thing and uh, point that out. And that might be worthwhile exploring, mainly because the gameplay themes aren't too dissimilar. My fear would be that the arcade mode would then be able to be expanded to have these other types of gameplay in. Though I do feel as though the witness painting is probably one of the most interesting um, gameplay gimmicks that we could, we could pull on for the arcade mode. So maybe we'd keep that as it is. Having these alternate gameplay modes um, the fingerprint matching, witness lineup matching, we might be able to pull out of this idea something that is more creative. But like I said, I will want to do more research and I wanna, would want to do some more prototyping. And this version that you see right here, uh, which I've put into Tile Identity on itch and I've separated it from the original Jam version, will be repeatedly updated with these ideas as I fix based on people's feedback, but also as my ideas change about what I would want to do with this game. So I just want to highlight that um, this emulator that I'm using is called OpenEMU. It works on Mac and OS systems. What's cool about this is that actually there's a settings menu at the bottom and it actually lets me change how the, how the game is displayed to you. So I can uh, go through all these different uh, effects here. And uh, it means we can capture some interesting screenshots. It means we can capture some interesting gameplay and uh, is way more interesting than just having it display like GB Studio displays. We can pretend like we are, um, you know, actually on a Game Boy with this. And I think as well, there's two different display modes, modern and default. The default looks a bit more washed out, which uh, might be what you want to see. And then the modern makes it more close to the actual colors that I put into GB Studio, uh, which instead you might want to see. So yeah, Open EMU is uh, what I'm using here. So yeah, I hope this has made you think a bit, a bit differently about your own games and getting other people involved into the brainstorming behind coming up with more interesting ideas that will let you be more creative as a developer. Um, never just sit there alone and uh, think that you can do it all by yourself especially when things slow down and get hard uh, you will find that by exploring the ideas that you have already had and try and think about more critically what is wrong with your game or what what 
isn't fun about your game, what is fun about your game, maximize the fun, minimize the boring. And uh, definitely get other people out for people's opinion. Even if it's just for bug fixing, it can help you take a step back and see the game how other someone else sees it. And definitely uh, go and play Tile Identity if you haven't already. I have a little feedback form on my itch page. You can uh, you can find it over at itch.io and uh, you can play it for yourself. You can download it for the Dot Pocket or on Game Boy. And you can also just play it in browser like I am here. So I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you so much to you guys. You guys are the absolute best. Remember to like the video if you like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now, as I said, I really appreciate any feedback on my games, and I hope you appreciate the feedback on your games too. So if you want feedback on your games, you need to be posting them on Reddit, making videos about them like I am here, posting them on Twitter, commenting on other people's games on itch.io. I feel like that's probably a good way of you networking and getting people's reactions to your games. So yeah, I hope these lessons that I've been taught by experience have been helpful for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.